Hello, Secretary Clinton. Hi, how are you doing today? We're doing great. This is Ebro in the morning. We also have Rosenberg and, and Laura Styles. How are you? I am terrific, and it's great to talk to all of you. Thanks for having me on. Well, listen, uh, we were having a debate here in the studio this morning before we get to the business. How do we refer to you? Mrs. Clinton, obviously, yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, First Lady. No, they no. dated. Um, Secretary Clinton. But I think Senator is strong. Do you have a, do you have a preference I between... Just said, I just said Mrs. Clinton is fine. What do you think? I'll answer to any of those. You can throw in Hillary, too. Um, but I loved being your senator for eight years. That was so much fun. But there any you go. of those See? are great. So we could call you Hilly? No. That's well, not good. Yeah, you know... I, I had some friends growing up who did. Hilly Rock on any block. <laughs> I Hilly Rock on, on any block. block. <laughs> um, well, well your, your, your listeners wouldn't know who you were talking to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Secretary, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, we had uh, Senator Sanders on the show a couple weeks ago and got to talk with him about some of his platforms. And the, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, one of the things that's been talked about so much is how, you know, um, at least in my circle and on Facebook and social media, is how much young, the really young progressive crowd got excited by Senator Sanders. And some of those people um, are maybe more accustomed to having you around. You've been now in politics for a long time. What do you say to that very young progressive voter about why they should be excited about the Clinton campaign? That's a great question, and, and I really appreciate it because, look, I want to break down all the barriers that are holding Americans back. Uh, and, and I have I've seen over the course of my life that we've made progress, but not enough. I care passionately about income inequality. I've been working on it for a really long time, but I also care about racial equality and women's equality and LGBT equality and you know, all of the many barriers that hold people back. And I share big progressive goals for our country with Senator Sanders, but I think I've laid out stronger plans for how to achieve them and how to make real differences in people's lives. I think it's about getting results. And, you know, New Yorkers took a chance on me back in 2000, and I will be forever grateful. And, you know, I'll have your back, and I'll fight hard for you, and I think we can make progress together. Senator Clinton, this is Ebro, um, or Mrs. Clinton, or Secretary Ebro. We covered this. You're good. I'm just, I'm just making sure. Um, a lot has been made about a lot has been made about the 1994 crime bill and um, the quote unquote super predators comment. And you're you have apologized, right, and said that you know what that comment then was not the right thing, and it was. And, and here today, as we sit here today, we're going to do better. Um, but I don't feel like that message is being heard because it gets brought up a lot. How does that make you feel? Well, it it certainly makes me you know feel sad uh, because I've spent my whole adult life, from my time as a lawyer with the Children's Defense Fund, trying to you know, protect uh, young people, trying to give them better opportunities, trying to even the odds. And I have, would never use that word again. It was used once, um, and I'm going to continue to dedicate my life to lifting up children uh, and young people who've been let down by the system or by society. You know, there were things about the 94 crime bill that helped keep people safe. There was a, an important provision about violence against women, uh, there was a package that included banning assault weapons, which I'd like to see do again. Um, but there were provisions, as my husband has made clear, uh, that didn't work and that had um, bad effects on taking too many people away from uh, their families and out of their communities. That's why the first speech I gave in this campaign uh, more than a year ago now was on criminal justice reform and what I want to do to you know, give people more chances to stay out of the criminal justice reform, uh, never to be incarcerated, and if they are, to have more opportunities when they get out. Um, Senator, uh, Mrs. Clinton, Senator, oh, damn. You're uh, really trying a part of this, I know. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> um, so how, how, do you like how Bill, Mr. Clinton, President Clinton, dealt with the protesters last week? Did you, when you saw that, what was the conversation between you and him? You know, he was... Um, doing what he's done in similar situations for a very long time, basically saying, all right, I'll be glad to listen to you, but then you have to give me uh, the uh, opportunity to respond because the whole crowd was 
trying to shout down the protesters. And, you know, that's what usually happens when somebody comes to see a person and somebody else protests. And so Bill was, you know, being as he usually is, very respectful. But the protesters just would not stop. And the crowd began to, you know, yell and shout, trying to drown them out. And I think what Bill kept saying is we need to listen to each other. Look, you know, you have a point of view. There's a lot that uh, we should hear from you about, but I have a point of view. We need to have more respectful conversations in our country if we're going to solve our problems and move forward. And, you know, I've been having lots of conversations. I've met with so many people who have really uh, important contributions to the discussion about criminal justice reform and ending the era of incarceration. Uh, so I, I understand what was going on there, and we're going to keep trying to, you know, have that conversation in public and, and in private. I mean, Bill, but um, Senator Clinton, Bill did get frustrated, though. He did, at the end of the audio, he did say, or in the piece that I saw anyway, I don't know if that was the whole clip, he did say, so the people that you're defending were selling crack to 13 year olds getting them high and sending them sending them out in the street to kill other people and you know I'm, I'm 41 years old I grew up in that era so I do remember how rampant drugs had gotten moving out of LA into other and, and gangs had gotten moving out of other LA into Little Rock Arkansas and St. Louis and Denver mm -hmm. and it became we had an epidemic in the US with gangs at one point and there were a lot of frustrated people and I saw that frustrating frustration in uh, Bill um, were you okay with that frustration? Um, I just, I'm just trying to for the people who saw that clip and might think yes, that. I, I look, I understand the frustration. You know, when he took office in 1993, the statistics were devastating. Violent crime struck nearly 11 million Americans, and millions and millions more were in fear. And, you know, it was a horrible situation. I, I know you can remember, I can remember, a lot of younger people, you know, they don't have any basis to remember. And it was important to try to help keep people safe. I mean, everybody from local neighborhood leaders to Al Sharpton were coming to the White House and the Congress and yeah. saying, you've got to do something. The Black people Caucus voted, their home. The Black Caucus voted yes. for the crime bill. That's, as did my opponent, Senator Sanders. But, you know, the good things that were in that are rarely talked about. You know, that bill actually reduced sentences for federal drug crimes, exempted first-time nonviolent drug offenders. It funded specialized drug courts and drug treatment programs and other kinds of programs, $3 billion to keep kids away from gangs and from uh, drugs. And so... There were a lot of good things, and I understand the frustration on the other side as well because a lot of states went much further. They got way too invested in, you know, private prisons. There you and go. There other you go. kinds of actions that I disapprove of. Right. There you go. It got and 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 <clears throat> here today, you feel like you have a plan to unravel this mess. I do, and you know, I have been very grateful to the people who have spent their time <coughs> talking to me about it because we want to do it right. Madam Secretary, speaking, we're talking about guns, and speaking of guns, um, <laughs> your opponent, your opponent, Senator Sanders, said some things that uh, were a little questionable this week, and this was one of the real weaknesses that existed, in my opinion, with his campaign, and that is his stance on guns. Um, to make it plain and simple for our listeners out there making a decision on voting, um, <coughs> Where do you really draw the line in difference between you and Senator Sanders on guns? I know there are plenty, but I want to make it plain and simple for the voters out there. First of all, the Brady Bill, which is our best way to keep guns out of the wrong hands, was passed as part of that whole uh, crime bill package, and Senator Sanders voted against it five times. And I don't understand that to this day. He has also voted to make it harder uh, to get the licenses away from gun dealers who are selling most of the guns that end up in uh, criminals' hands. And most importantly, in recent years, he voted to give special uh, protections to the gun makers and sellers 
uh, from any kind of liability for their reckless or negligent behavior. I was in the Senate at the same time. So was President Obama. We both voted no. He voted yes. And I, I see his refusal to, you know, acknowledge the 33,000 people a year who are killed by guns as a real blind spot. And I was especially uh, concerned when he refused to say that the parents of the Sandy Hook children who were murdered had uh, the chance and opportunity uh, to try to sue the gun makers so that they would quit advertising these military-style weapons to young people. So on this issue, which is a passion of mine because... I have spent too many hours looking into the eyes of and holding the hands of people who have lost their loved ones. We had an event yesterday in Port Washington on Long Island. It was hard for people in the audience, for me, for anybody there, not to just cheer up when you heard these mothers, these aunts, the daughter of the principal at Sandy Hook, talk about what happened to their loved ones. So... It's a big deal. I'm going to go after the gun lobby. I will not be deterred. I will not be intimidated. Uh, And we're going to get changes because I want to save lives. Love hearing that. Mrs. Clinton, um, this is Laura Stiles. One last question. Um, What does it say about our society or media? Like when we found out that you were going to be a grandmother and people wondered if it would be too much of a distraction to be both a grandmother and president. And also also crazy things that popped up because you are a woman running for president. Oh, I think you've really nailed that one. (laughs) I really appreciate your asking that, Laura, because we've had lots of grandfathers who have been president. That's for sure. uh, That's for sure. uh, As far as I know, they all loved their grandchildren and uh, found a lot of time to spend with them. There's lots of pictures of uh, grandchildren in the White House, whether they were, you know, the Roosevelt grandchildren or the Eisenhower grandchildren or the Johnson or the... Bush or whoever they were, and uh, I think it would be great to have the first grandmother in the White House. I think I'll bring uh, some additional perspectives, um, having, you know, the perspectives and experiences of a woman, uh, a wife, a mother, and now a grandmother. Well, Senator Clinton, uh, Mrs. Clinton, uh, Ma- First Lady, Madam Secretary. Secretary. There you go. <laughs> um, we appreciate you taking the time this morning. Before I let you go, I want to say something real bold and, and, and really clear. Um, I, you know, I, I, a lot of people want to hear from you um, because black and brown people in America are suffering. And, and low-income people in general. Our public school systems in New York City are horrendous. It's almost like going to jail every day for a lot of kids here in New York City with the amount of cops, pat-downs, violence, um, and just the weapons. And, and really, people want to hear you speak to that, I think, and especially a lot of young people uh, who live in these neighborhoods. And I, and I just hope as this campaign rolls on, um, because you've been on Capitol Hill a long time, I think people are fearful that once you get there, it's business as usual. And I think that's some of the fear. Um, Before we let you go, can you speak to that at all? I sure can. You know, I am passionate about protecting kids. That has been the North Star of my entire adult life, maybe because my own mother was abused and neglected and really had a hard upbringing. I know... Uh, that every child deserves the chance to live up to his or her God-given potential. And my presidency will be about the struggling and the striving, the people who feel left out and left behind. That's who I am. That's what I've done. You know, those early years as a lawyer for the Children's Defense Fund, I've spent time going to Alabama to try to, you know, break up segregated academies. I went to South Carolina to keep, you know, juveniles out of adult prisons. I have advocated, worked for, stood up, and championed uh, what I think every child in this country deserves. Uh, and that's what I'm going to focus on as president. Hey, Mrs. Clinton, thank you so much for uh, for prioritizing us and taking the time to talk when, to us. When you coming by to hang out, come hang out. We want you to yeah. come hang out, too, if you can, at some point. We'd love to see you. We would love to have you. I would love to be there. Thank you all so much for talking to me this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.